Hi everyone and thanks for being with me. I have a, another issue that I want to talk about. Now this, this particular reporting uh, occurred on the 23rd of November, I think. And uh, I just came across it the other day. But it is important to talk about because it relates to children who are in residential care. Now, I've been advocating for years that we should do away with residential care and we should find some other form of care arrangement for kids, uh, preferably therapeutic care within, uh, within the foster care system itself. But the government, particularly in South Australia, has more kids in residential care than any other state. Now, it's a shame that we do. It's a system which should have been changed many years ago. Uh, Rachel Sanderson talked about changing it, but of course never did. And uh, it's a problem that's just escalating over time. And we certainly need to do something about it. Now, my suggestion in regard to residential care is let's just stop take those kids away in the first place. Let's work with the families so that hopefully we can have the kids returned to them or maintained with them so but some of these kids are pretty unruly and we need to understand why this is the case that a lot of them are as unruly because of the trauma that they've received while they were living with their parents and the trauma of being in care with people who don't really ostensibly care for them as would their biological parents in many cases and I know a lot of kids that are placed in residential care as young as five and six, and they stay there for a long, long time. I know that kids wind up in residential care because they're so uh, unruly in foster care and foster parents aren't equipped to be able to work with those kids. Now, when they get into residential care, uh, they're normally with two or three other people, sometimes more, who are just as bad as them, sometimes worse. And I know of kids that have been in residential care where they've been, while they're there, they've been introduced to drug use, uh, certainly introduced to violence, and obviously, in some of the cases anyway, they've been introduced to crime. The reason why this happens is that all these kids have one thing they believe in common, and that is the state. And they see the state and their workers as their enemies, and they do whatever it is they can to disrupt that the conditions in which they live, to uh, disrupt the system that supposedly sits around them, the authority that sits around them that tells them what they should be doing almost on a daily basis. The consequence of all of that is that many of these kids find that they need to express themselves, often in very unhelpful ways. The system itself, though, is, as this article will tell us in a moment, is unable to cope with the kids and their behaviours, mainly because, number one, probably shouldn't have been taken away in the first place, and therapeutic processes should have been put in place to care for these kids, and particularly some sort of counselling system should be instigated, whereby the kids are receiving some form of counselling on a, um, a weekly basis. Some kids maybe even a bit more than that. But one of the reasons why this is a particular concern is that the kids are hanging around with their peers and they're being taught to do things that perhaps they wouldn't normally do, maybe, maybe not, but perhaps wouldn't normally be as encouraged to do if they were living in other forms of settings, even in some cases with their parents. And I know from personal experience that on many occasions the department is reluctant to let go of these kids, even though they would be better placed back with their parents. And um, I'd never understand that. I know that some of these kids have got mental well-being issues. I know that with some of them, and I spoke about this in a previous video, some of them would feel safer with their parents than they would in residential care. But, as I've said in a previous video also, while in residential care, they get some special concessions and one of those concessions is highlighted in this report, which I'm about to read to you. So the children as young as 13 regularly leaving residential care homes at night, a whistleblower says, go whistleblower, we should have more of them. Um, 
and they're leaving homes to night to commit crimes. I would suggest that they're not always leaving home to commit crimes, but I would suggest that on many occasions they do, breaking into houses and stealing cars and things like that, and probably some assaults. Uh, children under 30 living, living in residential care are regularly leaving their homes and not to commit crimes because of a, you know, this is what the advertiser says, a free-for-all system that does not enforce rules or consequences, says the whistleblower. They've been told that morale is at an all-time low within these facilities. Uh, there's assaults, aggression and verbal abuse have, has become a, part, a standard part of the job. Now, I would suggest that that's always been the case. I know that uh, from the work that uh, my wife has done uh, as a researcher in this area, um, that this has always been the case. Kids that have gone to residential care have always pushed back against the system and they've always run away. And some of those kids, not all of them, admittedly, but some of those kids have committed crimes, later on go on to commit uh, further crimes and wind up in an adult prison. I understand all of that, um, but uh, it isn't like this is new. This is something that's been present for a long, long time. And it's something which the, it's really interests me that they couch it in words like, we've just discovered that kids, for whatever reason, are now committing these crimes. And now, I can remember working decades ago around some, with some of these, these families and these kids and hearing of you know, where they've been gathering and that they seem to be attracted to each other. They find each other and they hang around in shopping centres because they have this common connection which is being displaced and, I think, being unloved and feeling unloved. Um, the Department for Child Protection, a youth worker in the suburban area um, who has been in the role for more than 10 years, said they felt compelled to speak out about the situation because managers in the department have failed to act on the concerns of frontline staff. And this, this in itself is a current issue, which has been going on for a long time, where the staff, and I've talked about this many, many times, happy to talk about it again, probably bore you silly, but the reality is that management do not listen to staff. Staff are often well informed as to what's happened. Management don't care because actually, at the end of the day, a lot of them don't even care about the kids. So why should they care about the staff? They don't. And there's obviously an off health and safety problem here as well if these uh, workers, often young, have been assaulted um, and there's been aggressive and verbal abuse and behaviour. And there's, there's probably some cases where some of these staff have got post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of working under these conditions. But does the department care? No, the department doesn't give a rat's ass, to be quite honest. Um, a department of child protection, youth worker, uh, I've already mentioned that, um, someone who gets, so they were saying that someone gets, will eventually get seriously ill uh, or injured or, or killed. Um, the worker and staff in residential care homes were limited in how they can enforce rules. For example, they're not allowed to lock them a home at night to prevent children from leaving. Um, when they want to leave at night, there's nothing we can do. The worker said, I didn't know that, actually. I thought they, you know, in our house here, we have the doors all locked because uh, we don't want people coming in. But uh, uh, obviously they they don't. What they probably mean is they don't lock them from the inside uh, and don't prevent kids from going going out. Um, they often left at night to meet up with others, as I've mentioned before, and staff later discover they had been involved in illegal activity. Children reported missing as per protocol. They allege that uh, youth workers in South Australia have recently been hospitalised because they have been attacked at residential homes. They said some of the issues stem from the therapeutic sanctuary model that has been rolled out in residential care homes in South Australia, which worked brilliantly in some homes, but allows other children unbridled freedom. Now, I don't understand what, uh, I understand kind of what the sanctuary model is, but I don't understand how it works somewhere and doesn't work other, in other places. I would suggest that that's because the workers do not understand and have the knowledge uh, to be able to work with that program uh, around the kids that they're working with. That they just do not have the skill set, hence the reason why uh, the sanctuary model doesn't work. Uh, and so as a result of all of that, at the end of the day, the department's going to say, we've tried this other model, it doesn't work, so we're going to dispense with it and we're going to do nothing at all, except maybe later on, years down the track, they bring in another model. It also doesn't work because they don't have the right staff working with it and eventually they just abandon that idea as well. And that is the pattern. You bring in a new project, it, it doesn't seem to work immediately or it doesn't work as well as what they anticipate because the staff are crap and it just 
continues the cycle. Um, interesting here, the Public Service Association, uh, which represents youth workers, said the issues were widespread and staff were under enormous pressure. Um, they talk about some of the cases that they've had, uh, kids that have taken to hospital and some of the reporting that I've reported on and that the, uh, the advertiser has reported on. We have some serious concerns about cases of assault and abuse of our members, this is the union, and have been working closely with them to raise and address work, health and safety issues. Uh, in a statement, DCP spokesperson said staff were well trained. Well, if you're well trained, the kids wouldn't be behaving as they are necessarily, and there'd be lots more support placed in place for them. And they probably shouldn't be in residential care to start with and to heal from the trauma in a therapeutic way. Well, you know, I'd love to know. I, um, I'd love to know what sort of therapy they're offering. I do know of some kids that do go to counsellors, some go to psychiatrists, absolute bloody waste of time because they just medicate them. But um, I know that some go to counsellors, you know, and what evaluation is ever done of that service that they're getting elsewhere and how good are those psychologists that they're seeing and how helpful is that process. I know if somebody does do that, I don't think it's very helpful at all because the behaviour has not changed. Uh, this can show that the number of missing person reports relates to a relative small number of children and young people. How the department would not reveal how many children living in residential care have been reported missing in the past year. And I would suggest, basically, that it's a lot. So, another example of a system that's failing. And I keep saying to you, if you're interested in repairing this system you may wish to join the Child Protection Party and attempt to do something about it. Or if you're watching this on my own YouTube channel, then I would suggest you still join the Child Protection Party and do something about it. Um, or at least contact me and uh, have a conversation about some ideas that you might have that might be able to make a difference in relation to some of these kids. And if you've had experiences as a kid living in care, I'd like to know, in, that is someone in more recent times, what that particularly looked like and how you were able to manage that. So thanks everybody for being with me. Just like you to subscribe, ring the bell, uh, boost up my numbers no matter where you're watching this, CPP or on the Tony Tonkin Show. Um, but just uh, let us know what it is that you think needs to change so that this system can improve. And this, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure that you're following us. And also, you can just make sure that you're sharing the post as well. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Look after yourselves. And be safe.